In this video I'm going to talk about eczema, sunshine and vitamin D. In previous videos I've talked about the effect of our environment on eczema. In particular I've referred to studies in which uh, various uh, in which ch the severity of symptoms of eczema was measured in large groups of children and I'll talk about those studies again in this article but it appears that when people move to a more rural, less polluted, warm, a sunny and humid environment that symptoms of eczema reduce often significantly. I personally experienced a huge reduction in my symptoms where I'm, where I'm somewhere that's warm, warm and sunny and According to data from 2006, about 41.6% of the US population has a vitamin D deficiency. Um, vitamin D deficiency has been linked to eczema and where studies um, test vitamin D levels in children with atopic eczema, they usually find that this, the, the children with the worst eczema have the lowest vitamin D. So it appears that vitamin D is required where our immune systems are sort of dysfunctional and where we have severe allergies. Um, vitamin D is also required to um, fight off bacterial infections, for example, in the skin and to build healthy bones. Um, vitamin D also increases levels of antimicrobial proteins called cathelicidins and that help to fight pathogenic bacteria and fungi in the skin. Now, in particular, um, there was a 2013 study which showed that out of 74 children, those with the lowest vitamin D had the most severe form of eczema and supplementing with vitamin D has been shown to help uh, manage the or decrease the symptoms of eczema um, and that was in a small randomised control trial. Now the best way to get vitamin D is through sun exposure and vitamin D is known as the sunshine vitamin because when you expose your skin to uh, the sun then your body can synthesise vitamin D from cholesterol uh, which is a, a type of fat and in particular um, UVB rays are better at increasing the amount of vitamin D produced by the body. UVB rays are available mostly between the hours of about 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. And the UVB rays um, help to reduce the symptoms of eczema. There was an Australian study involving 7,600 children um, with atopic dermatitis and it showed that children from the southern Australia which is colder and has less sunlight were twice as likely to develop eczema due to low vitamin D levels. Uh, a study of 126 British children showed that 62% of those who spent a holiday for one or two weeks in the Mediterranean region, obviously warmer, sunnier, um, in had an improve, experienced an improvement in their symptoms and then were, got worse when they returned. I think, I mean, as well as that, that could be a stress factor, obviously being on holiday is going to reduce your stress, but there's some, obviously something there. And then a similar study of 56 children with atopic eczema in Norway showed that the half of those that were sent to Gran Canaria um, had a, a reduction in the severity of their symptoms and that improvement lasted for three months after moving back home. And so they were able to reduce their use of topical cortical steroids and their bacterial infections on their skin decreased. But the children who did not go to Gran Canaria for that amount of time didn't have any of those benefits at all. So I think that's powerful evidence to show that one of the most significant things you could possibly do to reduce your eczema is move to somewhere sunnier, warmer uh, and make sure that when you're there you expose your skin to the sun so that you increase your vitamin D levels. Now how much sun exposure do you need? 
well, it, it's relative and it depends on how fair your skin is. On a, a standard sort of advice is to get, try and get 30 minute, 20 to 30 minutes a day. Now, if, you're very, if you have very pale skin and you're somewhere with very strong sunlight, you might need only 5 to 10 minutes a day and you'll be able to reduce, uh, produce um, a significant amount of vitamin D during that time, just from that short amount of exposure. If you've got much darker skin, you'll, you'll need more. And um, I think people with darker skin who live in countries that have low levels of sunlight, um, for example, Northern Europe or the North US, um, Canada, the southernmost parts of Australia, are, are, are at much higher risk of a vitamin D deficiency, which means that in a, in, as far as vitamin D deficiency is concerned, they have a high risk of, um, of, of experiencing severe symptoms of eczema. So, in particular for people with darker skin, it's important to try to, who live in northern climates, it's important to try to get the exposure to skin that you, uh, to, to sunlight that you need, and that could be maybe up to 30 minutes or more per day. And the key is obviously not to get burned, so you want to expose your skin to the point where You've, you can feel that you've had good exposure but you're not burned. Now for someone with very fair skin that may only be 5 or 10 minutes. And then as you develop resistance to the sun you want to continue um, with your uh, sun exposure but also um, increase the amount of time that you're in the sun so that because your capacity to handle sunlight and not get burned will increase. Try to avoid using sunscreen because it actually keeps the UVB rays out and it's the UVB rays that you need to get adequate vitamin D. Now, it appears that, uh, and if, you, if you're in a northern climate and you can't get away, um, something good to do would be to use a sunbed which has UVB rays and you could use, do that what, for five or ten minutes a day perhaps, if, every day if you can, but two or three times a week or even once a week and that will help you to top up on vitamin D levels. And vitamin D supplementation, oral supplementation, um, has been shown to decrease the severity of symptoms of eczema as well. So that's something that you could look into. Um, one way of finding out whether or not you do have adequate vitamin D is to get a blood test and ask your doctor whether or not um, you are a low or high, uh, well, you're, not, you're unlikely to be high, but whether or not you need to increase the amount of vitamin D. Um, in your body. I mentioned vitamin D supplementation and a really good way to get vitamin D um, without daily sun exposure is to take either to eat more fish or to take cod liver oil every day. So wild salmon, oily fish like sardines and mackerel have um, carry omega-3 fatty acids which have been linked which have been linked to a reduction in the severity of symptoms of eczema and carry good sources of vitamin D. Um, in particular, a, the average tablespoon of fermented cod liver oil gives about 1,300 IUs of vitamin D. Now, the recommended daily intake of vitamin D by the, by the US Council for Responsible Nutrition is 400. So it's very unlikely that you will overdose in vitamin D and therefore by taking a tablespoon of uh, cod liver oil a day or capsules to that amount you'll be getting the required vitamin D that you need if you don't ha get any sun exposure plus you'll be topping up, you'll be increasing your levels of vitamin D. So a, a study in 2006 um, investigating the effects of fish and cod liver oil consumption during pregnancy in the first year of life of 3,000 children showed that where the mothers and the infants consumed fish and cod liver oil during infancy, those children had the least risk of eczema in childhood. And there was another uh, 2013 study um, in which 3,285 children were uh, were studied and it was found that the children who consumed omega-3 fatty acids, which includes uh, cod liver oil and the oils found in fish, 
fat, fatty fish, had um, lower risk of eczema by 78% by the age of 12. So not only did that supplementation help them in the short term, it also reduced the possibility of developing allergies in the much longer term. So 10 years later, 12 years later, the risk was still far, far lower that they would develop any eczema. So I think that's powerful evidence which shows that vitamin D and sunlight can be really, really helpful um, in managing the symptoms of eczema and for many people are the most powerful two elements to, um, to help them to become independent of prescribed pharmaceutical medicines. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, and one more thing is that sun, UVB sun exposure has been shown to have antimicrobial properties. That combined with swimming with salt water means that it can actually, swimming in salt water means that not only can the skin heal quicker but any infections can be countered or reduced through very simple natural methods rather than using antibiotics or creams just through sun exposure and swimming in the sea. So if you can and you have the opportunity to move somewhere warmer where you, there's more sunlight and you can possibly get into the sea one, every day or once a week or something like that, it should have a really, really big impact and um, may allow you, you know, you may experience a severe reduction in the symptoms of your eczema. Anyway, I hope that's helpful. It'd be interesting to hear if you've experienced any benefits um, from sunshine and salt water. And if I've missed anything or I've got anything wrong, please let me know. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and leave a comment. And if there's anything else that you want me to cover, let me know. Thanks for watching.